Guys, 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 so a couple speed paints back, I redesigned my very first story characters. They were just dumb, st stupid, stinky Tokyo Mimi ripoffs, and I remade them to be more original, mostly just to bask in my own early art nostalgia, but apparently people actually really liked them a lot. <laughs> I think I got more fan art for this one speed paint than I have for my most active comic. But anyway, since then I've been thinking a lot about them and I've brainstormed a lot more about the world that they would be in and how their powers would work and overall how a series starring them would go. So I felt compelled to make some fake anime screenshots with them and then ramble about the ideas behind those fake anime screenshots. I mean, yeah. <laughs> but before we begin, thank you to Raid for sponsoring this video. Raid Shadow Legends is not just a mobile RPG, but one of the top three ranked RPGs in the Google Play Store. I mean, for good reason, right? Clearly the almost 15 million people who've downloaded it in the last six months are having fun. You can assemble a team from 16 different hero factions, those heroes including orcs, undead, knights, elves, and more, I'm particularly enjoying the Hellhound Horde I've collected for myself. Discover 13 spectacular locations and enjoy a fully voiced story campaign. And the best part, it's totally free to play. Even though there's already over 400 champions to collect and personalize, they add more than 14 brand new champions every month. And the more progress you make in the game, the closer you get to unlocking the Arbiter, one of the best legendary champions in the game. The game's going to be updating like crazy over the next six months, so join quickly to experience all the fun. Go to the video description and sign up using my special link to get 50,000 silver and a free epic champion as part of the new player program to start your journey. Now, on with the video. I only drew three screenshots for now. I'd like to do more in the future, but I need to spend more time designing their settings. Like, all of these have white backgrounds because of that reason. <laughs> the first one is really simple, just some character interaction between Emmy and Katsumi. Real quick recap, just in case anyone needs it, uh, Katsumi, Emmy, Izumi, Hukuro, and Yu are all a magical girl team that work together for some kind of agency that doles out magical companions that let the girls transform. So there would be a bunch of other magical girls in the story and all of their powers and themes would be unique to that magical girl. Some probably work independently, some work as a team, and the companion chooses the girl it wants to power up. The girl doesn't get any choice as to what power she receives. Katsumi's team happens to all have an animal theme appearance-wise, as well as a unique color scheme where Katsumi's outfit takes on more colors when she meets people that she's supposed to work with. This doesn't happen to any other magical girls in this universe that is unique to them. All the other magical girls get their own unique special things. Everyone's different. So this drawing is just when Emmy first joins, so Kat's dress gets the first color as a sign that they're supposed to work together as a team. I feel like Katsumi's more of a reserved, introverted kind of person, so before working together, I think Kat probably knew Emmy and they were friendly, but I don't think they thought of each other as friends, and it's the same case for Izumi and them. So backtracking a little bit, I know that I want them to have these little magical companions that are like mascots that you see in most Magical Girl shows, and that the companions will let them transform and turn into their weapon. I'm not sure what I want those companions to look like yet though, other than small. I thought maybe they could look like light formed into shapes, because I decided the agency's justification for the unorthodox fighting uniforms being dresses was that, oh, the outfit's appearance is made out of light to hide the true armor and make them look dainty and adorable so the enemy is lulled into thinking that they aren't a threat. But I'm not sure if I could make a little light companion look not boring. <laughs> I gotta think on it more. That's that's stumping me really hard. Also, mm, good god, <laughs> side note, I wish I had this more thought out because I keep referring to this thing they work for as the agency when I talk to my friends about it or when I talk online about it or I call it like the organization or the military thing and it feels so silly and I hate it just, at, you know, the, the, the people that they, they work with as a sort of magical girl army, what do you call that? The story is such a work in progress, oh my goodness. The second screenshot I did is based on Hukuro's weapon. I actually have a lot of thought put into everyone's weapon. I imagine that all the magical girls that sign up through this fighting agency, because they all have different themes to their outfits, they all have different themes to their weapons as well. And I wanted Katsumi's team's weapons to be based on children's toys. Katsumi, when I first made her back when she was still just a Tokyo Mimi ripoff, she had a really generic magical girl staff. 
and eventually I gave her a fan, except she used that fan to fight with fire, because wind and fire together, that makes sense. I say that now, but Saruno in Magia Record uh, has, has fans and fights with fire, so I guess I'm invalid, but uh, Madoka Magica, uh, Katsumi did it first. <laughs> But the weapon that I gave Katsumi early on that stuck was actually based on this weirdo toy called a Yobi. My brother had one and I was just so fascinated by it. Like imagine a giant frisbee on a stretchy string that you attach to your wrist so that you could sling it around and it would just keep coming back and you could do weird, weird tricks with it. I gave Katsumi what was basically just a Yobi. Uh, it, it, it was based on it, but it wasn't very well hidden and I just, I always thought that would be so cool to see in an animated battle, so I'm just, I'm fucking keeping it. I actually, side story, I liked the idea of fighting with a Yobi so much that in my freshman theater class we had to film a Shakespeare movie trailer parody, so I convinced my group to recreate Romeo and Juliet with Alien vs Predator, and then I also convinced them to film a whole scene where the guy in the Predator costume was doing Yobi tricks just because I thought it was cool. Anyway! <laughs> The rest of the team all got brand new weapons. Uh, Katsumi's the only one who kept her original one. Right away, I wanted you to have just a normal yo-yo. Not normal yo-yo, but like, you know, not a yobi yo-yo. <laughs> because she wanted a weapon like Katsumi's, so she got the smaller baby version. For Emmy, I thought it would be cool to give her a skipper. You know those, they're those things that you put a plastic loop around your ankle and then there's a, it's got a string and a ball on the end and you spin it around and you like, you skip over it. <laughs> That seems like something that would be fun to, to animate. Izumi I was really struggling with because my first thought was maybe some kind of compact, like something along the lines of jewelry or makeup, but that seemed almost a little too cliche. And then I remembered she's a, she's a rabbit. A jump rope would be perfect. She can, she's a rabbit. <laughs> and then because all of the weapons are made of magic, they can be manipulated and changed as much as the girls can imagine changing them up like adjusting the size or sharpness or stretching or breaking it apart for whatever reason or whatever they want to do. Everyone's got a pretty direct melee weapon, but Hukuro's is different. Because she's blind, it wouldn't make a lot of sense to have her on the front lines, so I gave her a really magical kaleidoscope. If she wanted, she could break the tube open and like use the beads to individually attack or to, to lay out on the ground to get a scope of vibrations, I guess as an example of how she could use it with her imagination. But the intended use would be that the kaleidoscope, as you turn it and the, the image refracts through the kaleidoscope, it bends the reality that the kaleidoscope sees. So as she shifts it, the idea is that the area it's facing would morph and crumble the way that the beads inside the kaleidoscope do, so it's kind of reflecting it, which is overpowered as shit. <laughs> But the damage cannot be undone, like they don't have a miraculous ladybug moment where everything goes back to normal afterwards. Anything that she she breaks, she breaks. And obviously she can't see exactly where and what she's attacking or destroying, so she has to be exceedingly careful with it. I thought it would be a really cool idea to give her something so overpowered that she had uh, a disadvantage with. Really excited to work out the details on that one. In this last screenshot I did, it was just a, a character moment between you and Kat. I mentioned before that Katsumi was probably Yu's babysitter, but I think that's too casual of a term. After some consideration, I decided that Yu lives alone with her dad. Her mom is out of the picture, her dad was a teen parent, way too young, wasn't at all prepared. He's not a bad person by any means, he's trying his best to give Yu a good life, but on his own, it's just very overwhelming, and he's out a lot doing a lot of various jobs trying to, to keep the, the food on the table. Katsumi met Yu by chance and walked her home after school, realized that they needed help, so she just took it upon herself to come over all the time to keep Yu company and make dinner and bring him groceries and all that good shit. I imagine Yu's dad and Kat feel positively about each other, but that they don't actually know each other very well, because when they're all together, they'd both be more focused on Yu, and them being all together at the same time is probably infrequent at best. Most of the thought that I've put into Yu's family, though, is actually, like, it's relevant after a time skip. I've accepted that I would like to turn this story into an actual series one day. I'm not sure what kind of series as in like animated comic. I'm not sure what I would do with it yet, but I just, I, I really like the idea. I, I like magical girls. I want to do something. I want to do something even though I haven't worked out the plot quite yet, but 
What I do know is that I want to skip back and forth in time, back in time being the characters as we know them now, and forward in time being probably 10 years later, with Katsumi's crew still, and then another younger Magical Girl team. I don't know if I can say why yet, I haven't decided if that's a big spoiler or not yet. I, <laughs> stories, writing stories is hard. Writing's hard. <laughs> anyway, that's, that's about all I got for right now. Thank you guys for uh, humoring my rambles. TLDR, I, I like these characters. I want to make something with them eventually, but I haven't yet, and I, I just... I <sighs> Also, though, mayhaps I have started animating everyone's uh, Magical Girl transformation sequence, and I may or may not have put a small preview of it on my Patreon. Only $2 a month if you're interested, but if you want to do $10 a month, I'll read your name at the end of my videos just like this. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much to the following patrons for your support. Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Dexter Koch, Chris Daru, Sugar Syringe, Cutes, Hat Josuke, Daniel Baton, Keeper Ray, Mama Ski, Roxas Prowers, Drunken Literary, Matthias Michelson, John Brooks Eisenman Jr., Peach Man, Zaira Rika, Field of Starlights, Volpe Bard, Angel Fuentes, Al Lewis, Katie Did Nothing, Stephen Farugia, Lauren Virgil, Sebub, Sleepy Omel, Alex the Cake Anon, Sammy, Mickey Ann, Hugeness, Dandy Canary, Mallow Chu, Miyu Smith, Matsuo Tanuki, Lickers, Officially, Shadowzer0615, Kaisa, Gabriel, The Lovely Kiara, Blast 10 Away, Aki Candy, Old Man Dunsparce, Heika Hyun, Silvermane67, Jackie Jellybean, Muzzfuzz, Ditsy, Chiariko, Star Stevenson, Spooky, T Arctic One, Florina Fairy, Yuka, Ace No Thanks, Hannah, Angel Cakes, Cameron Grace, Doodle Crazy Meg, Womel's Dwarf Art Lauren, Sound Alchemy, Archibald Anarchy, Dylan MX, Daddy Dahmer, Demessenja, Singing Joe, Nitsku, Daver the Bard, Lind Asia, TV Island, Free Flight, Firework Cat 25, Cavalry, Lilac Witch Kiki, Omar Reyes, Jarn Hunstock, Prenumbro, Isami Mario, Andre, Johnny Stars, Double Anon, Dojo Kid, Dead Times, Troll Killer 254, Stratus Wind, Insanity, J Bay Mayday, Nico Zawa, James Amora, Cute Cadaver 18, Midnight Paradise, Crazy Kitsune, East West 333, Zephestus, A Myriad of Stars, Flaming Puppeteer, Snow Sergeant, Skill Dragon Sylvie, Night Mage 14, Kutera, Zelfus, Cater, Sinister Stephanie, Jacob Dunham, Ethan Gardner, Fallen Zippo, Millabelle, Chesamoon 18, Johnny Aswick, Arctic Sentry, Sylveon Dream, Chyler B, Billiam X, Zebulite, Cheese Sprout, Makaru, Chris Sigma, Sweet S, Fox, Jeremy Readinger, Shell, Faley, Zelos, Tokomoto, Antiqua, Nimu Cost, Dust Munchies, Baked Potatoes, Fire Mega Man Zero, The Orc Cafe, Arwin, Russell the Jimmies, Pablo the Wand, Lily Pia, Dosko, Nico Starcy, Skull Daiquiri, Michael, Caleb Whitman, Emma Joy, Gus Daniels, Echo Titan, Andrew Robinson, Too Much Spirit, Jordan Brooks, Shadow, No Morphus, Kaido, Morty LS, Trash Zuma, Lena Swagmaster, ooh, Daniel Saria, Seth Haynes, Inky, Kurt Kuhlman, Red Pandasies, Dan Warren, Cookie Brook, Mercy Mayhem, Frenchie the Fry, Jonathan Demoisey, Elmira503, Coda, Philoso Fox, Lyratu, Michael McLaughlin, Rasurion, Hikari Yu, Honey Bee, Tiny Give That Frog a Hug, The Scorch Blaze, Swift Chaos, Orion Horizon Blue, and Kabuki. And also, extra special, huge thank you to my uh, $100 a month patrons. Ginger, Emu, Justin Inks, and Nifty are all so very generous. I don't know them very well yet, but you guys should hang out with me more in the patron game nights. Those are so much fun, and maybe I'll order McDonald's twice in one hour again. <laughs> Ian Kakado, their profile says, Hi, I'm Kika, and I do stuff usually without thinking first, and bitch, me too. Thank you, Raiden, for being our Patreon punching bag. Uh, ask him about his love for me. Thank you, Christian Pip. It's his birth month. Bappy Hearth month. <laughs> and also, on a more serious note, we found out recently that Rain's dad needed surgery for potential liver failure, and uh, it was really serious. It was really scary for her, and it was scary for me because uh, I don't want her to lose her dad too. She opened up a GoFundMe, and we raised almost eight thousand dollars in one day. Thank you so much, Force Raider. Uh, he donated $25. Angel Hickman donated $100 for that. Uh, Keith Brewer donated $1,000. And Stupid Genius donated $1,700, which is what got us to the initial goal. Um, that means the world to me. You guys are so incredible, and uh, thank you so much. I do want to also say um, we, we reached the initial payment for that. We have gotten Rain's dad the money. And thank you, everyone, so much for your help. The initial medical bills are now covered, but uh, Rain extended the, the GoFundMe a little bit if anybody wants to help out a little bit more just with the aftercare since 
Medical expenses don't stop right after the surgery. Totally optional, but if anybody wants to pitch into that, I would I would so appreciate that. It would mean a lot to both of us. Sorry, it feels like I'm asking a lot in this video. Just subscribe to my Patreon, help with medical bills. But seriously though, I'm, I'm very grateful and I've got a, a really good viewer base. It means a lot to me. I had, a, had an emotional day yesterday. Hope you guys all have a really nice day. Uh, go go do something fun. Go eat something you like. Uh, love yourself a bunch because I love you guys a bunch. Uh, bye.